and you're reaping it. But he that sows to the flesh, the field of his own nature, is going to reap corruption. But if you sow to the spirit, you're going to reap eternal life. See, I know we, we make every scripture about sowing and reaping about money. This is about money as well. But this is about actions. This is about resources. This is about sweat equity. What are you putting your sweat in? Is it the kingdom of God or is it the old field? Because we want God to go all out for us. We, we, we give, uh, it's equivalent, we, we give equivalent, and the only way I can think of this is a dollar, and I'm not even talking about money right now. We give God a dollar effort, and we want $10 million reward. We want a greater return than what we sold, and it doesn't work like that, and it breeds frustration, because people get frustrated because they think God is a sugar daddy. And God is not a sugar daddy. God is a God of principles. Yeah. I don't know if y'all can handle this. I don't, I don't even know. Can they handle the talk? Okay, listen. Genesis says that after God uh, finished everything, that he rested on the seventh day. He created man on the sixth day. Six is the number of man. The Antichrist, six. The beast, six. The false prophet, six. Six, six, six. Jesus was on the cross. Jesus asked God to forgive them for they know not what they do. And then he said it is finished and took his last breath. So we see in the old, uh, uh, under the, the first law, God rested because he was finished, not because he was tired. We see under the New uh, Testament that Jesus said it was finished. It was finished. Now I just want to ask you a question. What is finished? Everything. Everything is finished. Everything? Everything. Everything. Some of y'all can't even say it. How what is finished? Everything. Everything, right? And so when Jesus uh, went down to hell, he was, he was in the tomb for three days, three nights, took the keys of death, hell, and the grave, came up, led captivity captive, right? Was seen for 40 days. Over 500 people that was dead were seen walking around the streets of Jerusalem. And then the Bible said that he ascended far above the heavens, back up to his place, his position, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. Is that correct? Okay, in Acts, the Bible says Stephen is being stoned to death. And the Bible says his face shone like that of an angel. And it says Stephen looked up into heaven. Now, in order for this to be written, there had to be eyewitnesses. Matter of fact, Paul was there condoning the stoning. Not trying to rap, but he was condoning the stoning. And so the Bible says when Stephen looked up, he seen the heavens open, and he seen Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Jesus has always been sitting. Now he is standing to welcome his martyr in. He is sent. So that lets me know when a person pays the price and they're martyred for the kingdom that Jesus stands at attention. Mm -hmm. yes. It didn't say he came to rescue him. It said he stood to see what was going on. Are you living a life worthy to make him stand? Why, why are you saying that? Because Jesus did not come and rescue him from the stoning. But he received him into eternity. Why? I'm going somewhere. Because I'm going back to where I was. It is finished. Say it is finished. This is a principle word. Everything that we do and accomplish in the kingdom is done by principles. The person of Jesus prepares us for heaven. The principles of Jesus prepares us for earth. You got that? So if I'm going to be any um, if I'm going to be effective in this earth, I'm going to have to understand principles. We understand it in the natural. We understand if I put seed in the ground, I expect corn to come up. If I put seed in the ground, I expect cabbage to come up. That's a principle. I cannot sow cabbage and corn come up. Why? It's a principle. Right? So as a believer, I have to 
familiarize myself and get acquainted with the principles of God, yes. which is the word of God. Yes. Because if I'm going to get results, it's going to be because of his word. Right. Yes. It's not going to be because I begged Kevin to intervene. That's right. That's right. That's right. Okay. We're speaking spirits. Everything that was created was created by words. Created by words. Listen. The Bible says God said, mm -hmm. let there be light. And there was light. So everything that we see that is created, God did not get tools to make it. He just spoke it. So everything was created by words, right? We're speaking spirits. If we're in God's image, meaning that we can use words to create. The, the planet is voice activated. The planet only responds to words. It does not respond to tears and fears. It responds to words. Not just words, but words that are based on the word. Yes. That's why you cannot have an effective prayer life if you don't know the Bible. Right. You can become uh, mechanical and say the same thing over and over, but that's not prayer. Yes. Because God is only going to allow his word to come to manifestation because the planet and everything in it has to conform to his word. Yes. So when his word comes out of my mouth, it is as if God himself is speaking. Yes. And everything that I'm speaking to has to come into divine alignment. Yes. Yes. Are you getting this? Yes. So guess what? Telling God to heal them a counselor is not going to heal them. Why? Because it is finished. Pat Robinson's son on, on um, 700 Club, I, he was in India. And he came back to the Lord. And there was a person that was literally dying. And they asked him to pray. He didn't want to pray. And he was like, Father God, just heal him. Just heal him. He'll, they were not. He was like, just heal him, God. You're healing God. And God, he said, God rebuked him. He heard an audible voice. He said, God said, what you telling me for? He said, you speak to me. Mm -hmm. mm. yes. See, we say stuff like this where people are like, oh, no, I can never. No, no, he said, God said, you deal with it. Yes. And he said, when he said, I command you yes. Mm -hmm. in the name of Jesus yes. Yes. to loose her yes. and to let her go. Deliverance and healing manifested when he took ownership of what had already been afforded for him. Yes. See, we don't take, see, when we give it back to God, we haven't taken ownership. Yes. Stop sending God to go into the hospital and pray for that person. No, you go lay hands on them. Yes. You take ownership. The Bible says that by his stripes we were healed. Yes. It's all he's done his part. Yes. We have to do our part. Yes. Amen. Yes. When, when they laid people out on the sidewalk for Peter's shadow to come past them mm -hmm. to be healed, Peter wasn't saying anything. He was just walking past people and they were being healed. Mm -hmm. When Paul cut up handkerchiefs mm -hmm. and put them on his body to transfer the anointing, mm -hmm. the anointing is transferable. Yes. Whoever took the handkerchief and put it on their body was healed and demons came out. Paul didn't have to be present. The principle was present. Yes. What is the principle? That the anointing is transferable. Yes. Yes. That's New Testament proof. Mm -hmm. The Old Testament, when Elijah was caught up and his mantle fell, Elijah tore his own clothes off, wrapped himself in Elijah's mantle, and went over to the Jordan and said, where is the God of Elijah? And hid it and the water separated. Why? Because there is a transferable anointing. Yes, yes, yes. It's a principle. Mm -hmm. It works. Yes. See, when we work the word, the word works. Yes. You can lay hands and transfer the anointing. Yes. It's transferable. Yes. It's a principle. Yes. When, when they chose the seven men to become deacons and the apostles uh, laid hands on them. The Bible says that the church began to grow. Even priests were getting saved and great works with miracles were being done. Why? Because now the apostles say it's not, it's not just 12. We're, we're transferring this into others. So to say all that to say this, that everything works on principles. It works on principles. In the natural and the spirit. You, you get on an airplane, you don't go under the inspector and say, I wonder how it works. It's a law. It's the law of thrust. 
It's a couple of laws, but it's the law of thrust. What does the law of thrust say? That when the airplane gets more air under the wings than the weight of the plane, the wind will begin to support the plane. It's a law. It works the same way every time. Gravity, you go up on this building, I don't care if you have South Spider-Man. You jump down, you're going to get hurt. It's a principle. You're not walking on air. It's a principle. It works the same way every time. That's why it's important that you know the word. Because the word contains the mind of God. And because God understands, he put principles here, we, the devil wants to keep you ignorant. Then if you ever figure out why the devil fights you to keep you from getting in your word. You're no threat ignorant. You want to know why the devil fights to keep you out of prayer? You're no threat prayerless. I read, but I don't pray that much. Let me help you out. We just shifted. We just shifted. Have y'all, did y'all feel the shift? We shifted. Let me help you out. The Bible says in John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and there wasn't anything that was made that was made without the Word. That's what it says. So in the beginning was what? Word. And the Word was with who? God. And the Word was who? And the word created what? Everything. 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 So when Jesus was born from Miriam, which we call Mary, he was born of a virgin, right? The word became flesh. The incarnate Christ. The, 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 the word was wrapped in flesh and put inside the womb of a 17-year-old virgin that gave birth to the word Made flesh. Get that in your mind. The word made flesh, right? Yes. Jesus grew up as a normal child. He got lost. Well, he didn't get lost. They were lost. <laughs> Some of y'all get that next week. They went back and saying we were looking for him. He said, why were you looking for me? Didn't you not know I must be about my father's business? Now, now stay with me. Go on somewhere. Jesus was the what? The word made what? Flesh. The Bible says, say the Bible says, the Bible says that Jesus was, would get up a great while before day and go up into the mountain to pray. Constantly we see Jesus going to pray to get with the Father. Then he comes back and he do these miracles and he say, I only say what I hear my Father say and I only do what I see my Father do. When did he see that in prayer? I'm, I'm going somewhere. Jesus was who? The word made what? Flesh. Okay. If the word had to pray. I want you to get this. Because you, 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 some of y'all too deep. If the word had to pray. Yes. He was the incarnate word. Yes. He was the word before there was a book to Come put words in. Yes. He has been in eternity. Yes. If the word had to pray. What gives us the audacity to think that we can go through this life without prayer? First of all, a prayerless life means a self-sufficient life. Means that you're dependent on your own self. Let me, let me help you out. The word, you got to get this. The word does not work without prayer. Why are you saying that? I'm going to make it practical. How many of y'all had a Jerry curl back in the day? Man, that's, that's a lot of y'all. Okay, stay with me. The Jerry curl, listen, we don't want to see no pictures. The, the Jerry curl is the word. Stay with me. You got me, Sister Ruby? The Jerry curl is the word. The activator. It's prayer. The word does not function right unless it is activated by prayer. There are a lot of people, 